Hey guys. Uh, so, something I'd like to share with you. Um, yeah, mad scientist. So, in a previous video, I shared with you the capacitor bank made out of these capacitors. I said I was going to share something with you. Okay. I uh, got a very good deal on these capacitors, so I thought I'll just get a few extras and this way I can do some other experiments and also some things I've always wanted to do. So, mm, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, I bought a couple, so now I can do some very cool and interesting experiments. Um, yeah, I just went a little hog wild. I don't think I'll ever run across a deal again for these type of capacitors, so I thought I'll take 50. Um, and so there I bought 50. And uh, yeah. That's almost stupid. Uh, so you might be thinking, what did you do that for, Russ? A couple reasons. Let me share with you. Let me share with you what's going on. Okay. Here's the deal. For those of you who know Jason Verbeely. If you don't, please go check out his work. Okay, what he has been trying to do is there's a company called uh, CMR Magnetics, and this company has magnets that look similar to this neodymiums, and when you get them close together, they do very odd things, and when you take viewing film such as this, and you put it across the surface of that magnet, there is a bunch of little tiny magnets imprinted within the solid magnet, and he has been trying to replicate that for a while. I said, hey, I'm going to be getting some capacitors for the popper, and I ordered a couple extra, so why don't you send me some stuff, and I'll do my best and try to magnetize these like you are trying to do. I told him that I think he's going to need a lot more power. I can safely discharge these capacitors now that I've designed a circuit for the popper and we know it works. The second version is going to be a lot better and that's what I'll be using initially. So these are blanks that he got. He said these were extremely hard to get. They're just blank neodymium magnets, non-magnetized. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be attempting to do that for him. Now, what's the other thing, Russ, that you really wanted to do? There's a couple things. For a very long time now, um, for those of you who know, let me grab this. For those of you who have seen this a long, long time ago, this was, this was the capacitor bank that I own. That was it. Okay, they're 330 volt, 120 microfarad capacitors. And this was the biggest cat bank I ever owned. And I always tried to crush cans. You know, you wrap a coil around there and short this thing out and crush cans. Well, well, um, this just didn't do it. But I tried, and uh, I tried real hard. Uh, so now I've upsized my capacitors and we're going to crush some cans, and you know what else we're going to do? We're going to shrink some quarters. Now, I don't know for sure if the low voltage, high capacitance capacitors will do the same thing as the high voltage, low capacitance capacitors. So you see these pictures and images, and there's a couple YouTube videos of these guys. They've got like 76,000 joules of energy and they slam it into a little bitty coil and it just evaporates. But there's such an intense magnetic field right there that you can 
shrink things or compress them because of the magnetic flux. So you put a quarter in there and it will shrink to the size of a dime. Um, basically, what I have done here is mounted these on a piece of polycarbonate. All right. And I'll be putting bus bars across the top of here, and this will be one bank. This bank is a thousand joules. Okay, I have enough to make ten of these. I have ten thousand joules worth of energy that I can apply to something. I already have all of the other plates here that I've made, and the other thing is the aluminum bus bars. I have uh, 3 sixteenths by 1 inch long, or 1 inch wide, uh, and I'll be cutting this and mounting them on here for bus bars. Now then, I haven't quite figured out the connection for here yet, but I think I'm going to be doing something with uh, bolts, and actually running the bank vertical, and running the bank down, and that'll be the easiest way to transfer it. Not sure yet how I'm going to do that. The other thing I got... Well, some aluminum angle. I got a really good price on this stuff. I bought it at a local shop. Really expensive if you go to Lowe's or something. That was This was extremely reasonable. So I went ahead and got aluminum. I'm going to be making a frame. Um, 25 of these will be in a single bank and there'll be two of those and they weigh over 50 pounds. Um, each one of these weighs a couple of pounds. Probably four to five pounds. Um, let's see. 25 of them, they weigh two and a half pounds a piece. So that's that's a lot of weight right there. Um, so I, I didn't want to make the bank so big I couldn't actually do anything with it. So yeah, that's the newest adventure. So if there's anything out there that you guys have seen, oh and before I forget, there is a shrinking quarter video, uh, like 180,000 frames per minute or per second. And you can actually see the quarter shrink. It's really cool. Um, so look at that one up on YouTube. But anyway, if there's anything you guys think I should try while I can safely discharge these capacitors, and you've always seen stuff that you guys want to for me to try, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a shot. I will post a new thread over at the forum, something like Silly Capacitor Bank or something like that. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go get some food and I'm going to go get some sleep because I am getting slap happy and very tired. So, there you go. Um, yeah, so I will be attempting to help Jason out, which is the initial thought behind getting the extra capacitors, but I'm not even going to tell you what I paid for these because it was a stupid low price. It was ridiculous. Like, I will never pass this up again. The guy that I bought these from said that he took them all out of the same frequency drive. He said it was a 10,000 amp frequency drive for some nuclear power plant. That's crazy. There's, if, if you had the rest of these, he said there was 100 of them in there. I bought 50 of them. And he said that they were all on the same drive, so that's 20,000 joules of energy stored up for that drive. That's huge. These other little frequency drives I've taken apart just have, you know, eight little bitty tiny capacitors in them, and they're enough to do the job. So I could not imagine how big that drive was. So, yeah, that's the newest adventure. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it because I've always wanted to do certain things and try some certain experiments. And um, the batteries that I got back there that I told you guys I was going to ho all hook up and discharge them. There, There is nowhere near the amount of energy in those as there will be in these capacitors. So yes, I will be trying different type of coils. Everyone takes normal coils. What would happen if we discharge 10,000 jolts into a quarter inch miniature starship coil? That would be awesome to watch. So anyway, there you go. That's the new... Uh, New thing that I'll be playing with on the side, um, like I said, I had to buy the capacitors for the PAP replication, so what the heck. Grab a couple extra at the rate I bought them at. It was a stupid price. Silly. Peace out, guys. Have a good day. See ya. Woo! Back to the future, baby. Think we can get back to the future with these?